So today we're going to be making this new style stuffy called a flipped stuffy and it is a cute little stuffy that when you flip it from one side to the other you get a second stuffy. So our little chick can hatch from our cute little egg. So we're going to get started and show you how to make this cutie up all of our materials and we are going to need two panels for your chick portion and two panels for your egg portion. So I'm doing a yellow fluffy fabric for the chick and I'm going to do a pale blue egg. Uh, this will depend on what hoop size you're doing. I'm doing the 5 by 7 so the recommended sizes are 8 by 8 for each panel for the mains and you're gonna so you cut two for each that will give you lots of seam allowance which is good if you're a beginner but you may want to cut that down if you are more experienced with stuffies uh, you'll also need another panel for the back of your wings and the little hair floofy and I'm using a print for the inside of the wing this is a flannel so I'm going to zigzag the raw edges you also need a small scrap for the face applique on the chick. And because we're using fluffy fabrics, water soluble stabilizer is your best friend. You obviously need your hoop and stabilizer. I'm using a heavy 1.8 ounce tearaway. Uh, I will probably float an extra piece under the eyes because the eyes are really big on this. So it'll give some extra support for all those stitches. And you need your thread and your scissors and all of your regular supplies. So you're going to do this in four hoopings. Your first hoop is your wings and your little hair floof on the top. So that one I've loaded on the machine and you're going to go ahead and stitch your step one on your stabilizer. So step one shows you the placement of where you're going to lay your wing and your little floof on top of the chick's head. So the next step is the details on the hair floof. So I'm going to lay a piece of fabric down over. And then just a scrap of water soluble so the stitches don't sink in and I'm going to do that in a darker yellow so that it shows up on the light yellow. You can see just the little details to give some contour to the floof on top of the head and you can go ahead and peel off your little soluble stabilizer scrap. So we're just going to finish out this hoop by adding our backing. So the back of the chick floofy thing, I'm going to use the same material. And on the back of the wings, I'm going to use my printed flannel to give it a bit of interest. So because I have used a directional print so that it matters which way you put the fabric, I have chosen to manually stop in the middle of step four, which is our wing final outline. And I am going to try as best I can to mirror those two fabrics so that the wings look the same. So we have finished hoop one, uh, step three was the outline around the hair floof and step four was around the wings. Like I said, I mirrored the two wings because it's a directional print. And step five is just a stop star that prevents your hoop from recentering so you don't have it getting caught on any bulk on the middle of your hoop. 
so you can go ahead and hoop that cut your pieces out with a seam allowance I'm going to zigzag the edges on my sewing machine for the flannel or you can just cut an extra wide seam allowance on the flannel so it won't fray away and pull away from your stitches and you can re-hoop for hoop two for hoop two you're going to need two of your panels one for your chick one for your egg and basically we're just joining the back so that the back will be two-toned so you'll have a chick with a chick back and an egg with an egg back if you are skilled in the sewing machine all this hoop is basically taking two fabric pieces sewing it right sides together and then flipping it over to create a seam in between you want your panels to be those full sizes given in the tutorial so eight by eight you're going to have excess fabric that is laying over your hoop so you can go ahead and stitch step one onto stabilizer. So step one has been stitched. It gives you the width you need your fabric plus some seam allowances. A little extra wiggle room is always nice. And our join line. So you are just going to lay both your fabrics right side together with a seam allowance over the stitch line here and it's going to tack that down so we can flip it over and have two fabrics that are joined. So I am laying my chick fabric face up. It doesn't really matter but the tutorial says chick so we'll go with that. And it's just over the placement line to the, the little markers at the bottom. And then I'm just going to lay my egg fabric right side down right over top of that chick fabric and then I will go ahead and stitch step two. So it's gone ahead and run a tack down plus a zigzag just for security and you're going to go ahead and just flip down your blue layer or your egg layer I should say and smooth that out and then step three and four are going to just tack down your fabrics. So step three, just stitch down our tack down of our blue fabric, so just like a top stitch. And step four is the yellow, and that is ready to be unhooped and to move on to step or hoop three. We've got hoop three loaded, which is going to be your chick face. And we're going to attach our bottom of our egg front to this hoop as well. So you're going to start with step one by stitching directly onto your stabilizer. We have stitched step one onto the stabilizer which shows us where to lay our chick fabric and we're going to float our fabric over that placement line and tack it down. I've gone ahead and tacked that down with a piece of water soluble stabilizer. Some people prefer to wait until after you've done the face applique and if that's your preference, that's fine. Now we're going to stitch the next step, which is going to be our face placement in which we will applique our face fabric on. We've done the placement for the face, so you're just going to float whatever face fabric you like right side up over the placement and tack that down and then we'll trim off the extra. We have tacked down the face fabric and then we're going to go ahead and trim all the way around as close as we can to the stitches without actually cutting the stitches. My favorite are my double angled for doing this that trimmed up and then we're just going to run the satin stitch around the face to secure that fabric down. So 
we've got the satin stitch done around the face and we're going to go ahead and stitch all the details of the face. I'm going to take an extra piece of stabilizer, just a scrap from my previous hoop and just float it underneath my hoop where the face is to give that face some extra support. We're going to go ahead and stitch through all the details, steps up to step 13. So I have stitched step six and step seven, which is the white and the eye color. Step eight is going to be your optional eyelashes. If you don't want your chick to have eyelashes, then you can just skip step eight. So I've gone ahead and stitched all the way to the end of step 13. 13 is your cheeks, so you can leave those off if you like. Uh, I did the beak in a purple. I'm not sure I like it yet or not, but it sort of draws from the printed fabric on the wing, so I thought it'd be cute. I used water soluble on top, and now looking back at it, you probably didn't need that first set of water, water soluble because all the stitching is over the applique. So you're going to go ahead and step stitch step 14 which will show you where to tack down your wings and your hair floof. So stitch the placements for the wing, the hair, the other wing, as well as the egg fabric. So it's going to tack down the egg first. So just like we did in hoop two, you're just going to lay your egg front fabric right side up over the placement and tack it down. We've tacked that down and it does your zigzag again and we're just going to flip this over and stitch your step 16 which will just top stitch that blue fabric there. So we've tacked down this extra fabric. Do not trim any of this away. You're going to use this for your next hoop to do the rest of the egg stuffy. So that's just joining it in. So we're gonna go ahead and tack down our limbs. While all the details were stitching, I went ahead and cut them out. So you have your hair tuft and you have your wings. I chose to fold them. Um, you can do that just by hand tacking it down or I did it on my sewing machine. You want them to be mirror images again because they're going to be on either side of your chick. So the easiest way is to just lay them out as you want them to look and then you just flip them over like your, your placement was a mirror. So all of those just flip over and then you tack them down. At this stage, you're going to want to really watch your machine and make sure that nothing gets caught underneath your foot because you're dealing with a little more bulk with each limb. So when you start your tack down, you want the limb just under your needle, not in front of it, or it might get caught. And you can also use water soluble on top of these to help that not get caught up as well if you're finding it difficult. If your machine has an adjustable hook foot height you can increase that but just really babysit these steps so that nothing gets caught up and torn out of your hoop. We've got a little chick playing peekaboo with our limbs. And our next step is step 20, which is going to be adding the backing. So we're only adding the backing 
to this part of the hoop, but you're going to need your panel that you created in hoop two. So you're going to lay it right side down over your fabric and you're matching up the seam line here with the seam line here and as centered as you can over. So I'm going to pin that in place and then run the uh, step 20. If you're using pins, you want to make sure that you're pinning outside of the stitching area. You don't want to be going over a pin on your embroidery machine. So I have lined up the seams and placed a pin on the outer perimeter where it's not going to stitch, as well as one way up here. The design only comes to about here, just to keep that fabric flat. It is going to start the outline around this area, so just watch that your foot does not get caught in that seam. You can put a piece of water-soluble stabilizer over it if you are really nervous but I just watch it and if it starts to look like it's going under, I will just stop the machine and tuck it under the foot. So it's gone ahead and done that final outline around the hoop. We have both layers of our blue on the bottom and both layers of our yellow on the top. You'll also wanna make sure around those limbs that you're really making sure that your foot isn't getting caught up on those limbs. And if it looks like it's getting hung up in one place, stop, lift your foot up and make sure that it goes over top of the limb because that can cause a needle break. So the last step that we have to stitch is 21, which is a matching marker. So we are going to continue to do the rest of this hoop on another hoop. So we want to put those little markers in there so when we uh, re-hoop we can align our stuffy up so everything matches up. So you just go ahead and stitch those in a color that you probably can see really well. I normally would do that in a, a yellow to match but it's a fluffy fabric and that makes it easier for you guys to see. But make sure those mar matching markers are a nice contrasting color so you can see them little matching markers. I did them in black thinking about the egg crack in the next piece so I just chose that to save a color change. Uh, we're going to go ahead and unhoop. Our final step is just a stopping star again that prevents the machine from going up and hitting that seam or any of the bolts here on the lead sensor so you just take that step back. We have got a fresh piece of stabilizer in for hoop four and we're just going to stitch the first step right on the stabilizer it is the matching markers so that we can match up this hoops matching markers with the hoop that is going on next so we just stitched two lines on there and you're going to lay your hoop 3 material over top and you can see the marker there you're just going to match that marker and that marker and pin those in place. So I've just gone ahead and lined those up as best as I can and just pin them in place. I personally like to rerun that step, step one right over top to make sure that I have lined it up perfectly. So I'm gonna restitch step one over top of there, but you can skip that if you wanna just use the double check. I just like to triple check. So I restitched step one and just right on top of those lines so I know that this hoop is aligned with the fourth hoop. So if you didn't want to do that, you can just leave your pins in and then just flip your backing out of the way and that's going to be your double check lines, which should stitch right over your placement lines to make sure that you've gotten it in. So this will be a triple check for me, but a double check if you haven't uh, done the first step repeated. So those double check lines just stitch right on top of each of the placements you had from the original hoop three outline. So as long as those line up, then that means you've got everything lined up. If they don't, then you need to take those out very gently and just realign your hoop by repeating those steps. So now that we know that our hoop is lined up, we're just going to run the next step, which is step three, and it's just going to tack down that fabric. So
So we've got that fabric tacked down and we're just going to run the crack detail step, which is step four, I believe. Yeah, step four. So I'm just using some water soluble stabilizer because my minky has a bit of a pile there. Now that our detail on the crack is completed, we are all done stitching the details here. We just have to finish closing up our stuffy. And you're going to do that by pulling down that fabric and smoothing it over. And we're just gonna run the final outline and it'll leave a hole for turning there. So we've got our final outline done. It should run right over top of the final outline here and come all the way around and leave an opening so we can turn it. So you can take it out of the hoop and just trim with a seam allowance around the outside and remove any excess stabilizer you don't need. All cut out with just a seam allowance there. And before we turn it around, you're going to want to match up one end to the other. It doesn't matter which way you do it. You can do it with the faces in or the faces out. And you're just either going to hand stitch or machine stitch just the top outside of the seam allowance together. So just right here, I'm going to throw a few stitches in there. Okay, just along those seam allowances, I just did a zigzag on my sewing machine. Make sure it goes through both layers. And we can go ahead and turn that stuffy using this turning hole. I've got it turned right side out through that turning hole. I did have to take um, the stitch ripper to get those basting stitches out there where I had uh, repeated step one. So if you repeat step one, you'll have to do that as well. If you just do it as per the instructions, it should be fine. And then you can just close that hole via a ladder stitch which is included instructions in the tutorial and then you can just flip your stuffy inside out and your egg can hatch to become a cute little chick you can choose to add a little bit of stuffing through that turning hole before you close it if you wish um, it is not mandatory because it's kind of floofy with all the extra fabric anyways but that's to your preference. Just don't stuff it too full or it'll be too difficult to turn around. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. It's a really fun stitch out and kids really seem to like the way you can interact with this new kind of stuffy. So enjoy. Happy stitching.